Kia ora koutou. hello everyone and welcome to this video about the new moon in Aries that's coming up on the 20th of April 2023. This is the second new moon in Aries of the year which is unusual. My name is Fiona of sunandmooncalendar.nz and before we get into what's happening with the new moon I'm going to turn over the calendar. So we have had, we've had, we have had Capricorn New Moon at the start of the year, Aquarius, Pisces, the first one in Aries, and now we are going on to the second new moon in Aries. Let's get into the video. This new moon is in the sign of Aries and it is an eclipse, a solar eclipse. It's the first eclipse of the year and it is the first eclipse in Aries for around nine years. It will take place at quarter past four in the afternoon New Zealand time on the 20th of April, that's a Thursday. At the time of the new moon at quarter past four on the Thursday afternoon, the sun and moon will be together towards the northwest in the sky. After sunset these days or these weeks, we are getting amazing views of Venus as an evening star. So you can see that just where the sun has gone down. And so Venus tuahiahi, miremere tuahiahi, standing in the evening, or rangi tuahiahi, a different name is given to Venus when she's an evening star or a morning star. And the ruling planet of this new moon is Mars, because Mars is a ruling planet of Aries. And to see Mars, you can look further around towards the north after sunset. I use the constellation of Orion to get to know the sky a little bit and I don't know many of the constellations but I can always spot Orion because of the three stars together of Orion's belt and Puanga or Puaka is part of Orion and Mars will be to the right of Orion it's currently in another constellation that's the constellation of Gemini it's, and Mars is not quite as red as it was a few months ago when we had the Mars retrograde but it still has a red tinge this is the zodiac wheel showing the last new moon in Aries which took place at 0 degrees 49 minutes on the 22nd of March. And now we have another new moon in Aries and this time it's at 29 degrees 50 minutes. That is so late in Aries it's called the anaretic degree, the 29th degree because it can be quite intense and intensify the energies of that sign. So that is on the 20th of April. We're going to look again at the energy of Aries and as I said the planet Mars is the ruler of Aries. So ruled by Mars. Mars is bold, energetic, takes initiative, likes action, does not like inaction, doesn't like waiting around, just goes for it. And the element of Mars is fire and that goes with that red look of Mars. Fire sparky, enthusiastic, let's go, explosive at times and ready for a fight at times. And the modality of Aries is cardinal, going places just like a busy motorway, everyone rushing, rushing here, going to somewhere. So this is not just any new moon because it is the second new moon in Aries but also it is a solar eclipse and this is a significant eclipse being the first eclipse of the year and the first eclipse in Aries for nine years and the first one with the north node in Aries in 18 years. But with the eclipse the moon will be between the earth and the sun and I say that but it won't be exactly according to our viewpoint in New Zealand. We might get a little bit of a shadow over it. And I've downloaded here a map of the world and I've put a bit of a graphic showing the rough idea of the eclipse path. It's not exact because I couldn't make the graphics work. What you can do is go on to time and date and look up at the eclipse path and you can see it there and there's a really cool animation of it actually. But a little bit of the outside shadow of the eclipse will fall across the North Island of New Zealand. I don't know if you'll actually notice anything. So we will talk a little bit later about what it means to have this eclipse. 
at the time of the new moon take some moments to pause and rest and contemplate and it's a good idea not to start anything new around those days of the new moon this is even more so the case with this new moon not just because of the eclipse but because mercury will be turning retrogrades the day after and with Mercury going retrograde, it's not generally a time for starting things, unless it's something you've planned all along and uh, sometimes it can go perfectly well. But other times starting new things that you suddenly get a new idea for and it just seems a great idea and then later on you find out it wasn't such a great idea. So this is a new moon for going into a three week period of looking back over things and revising things. So let's look at what's going on with this new moon. There are three main points I'm going to talk about with this new moon. One, it is the second new moon in Aries. As I said, that is unusual. It's a second chance to make new starts, fresh beginnings and new initiatives. However, it's also going into this Mercury retrograde and that means that we're likely to be going back over that new ground that we've been breaking into over the last few weeks, even the last few months. The new developments and initiatives and the things that have happened to us, it's been a roller coaster. We've been charging ahead or things have charged into our lives in some cases and we'll be going over revising, redoing and tweaking and making things more streamlined and maybe sorting some stuff out as well as that we have the eclipse and that could mean that there are sudden turnarounds sudden changes of direction and there could be a feeling of fate with those so there you can see the dates of mercury retrograde starting on the 21st of april just after the new moon and finishing on the 5th of May so that is a time to revise accept that things won't go smoothly you might take your car to get fixed and something goes wrong way more than what you even took it in for and it ends up being at the mechanics for weeks as I said in the last video um, messages can get lost emails can disappear you say the wrong thing to the wrong person mm, arrangements can go wrong so those are the dates, 21st of April, Mercury stations to go retrograde and Mercury at that time appears as an evening star when you can see it, Mercury can be very hard to see. On the 5th of May, Mercury has come back, conjunct the Sun and then going on towards the 15th of May when Mercury stations or it stops and turns to go direct and then it will appear as a morning star. I plan to do a video that fully focuses on Mercury retrograde and a little bit of the astronomy behind it and more about Mercury itself. But for now, here is a slide showing some advice for how to work with Mercury retrograde. It is a time to revise, redo, research. You can go into the future if you're at the research stage of a new project. Anything that starts with the prefix re, R-E, redo revise rediscover research along the way check your communications and your arrangements and be patient when things or if things don't turn out as planned or don't go to plan or end up messily working out not so well it's all fine that's all part of mercury retrograde it can be tiring because we do need to be more focused and our brains are more fuzzy but they need to be more focused because of all the communication mix-ups and challenges that are going on. But that's the way it is. Also, sometimes things and people, matters, uh, issues can pop up from the past. You might see your ex for the first time in a few years. That can also happen with Venus retrograde, which will be happening later this year. But just take note of what comes up during this period. One of the things I love about astrology is that it acknowledges that it's not actually natural or even desirable to always be pushing forward to the next new goal, and always into achievement mode, always making more profit or gaining more like sometimes modern life expects of us. So Mercury retrograde three times a year for three weeks at a time we have to go back over things we're forced to do it by the energies 
of the universe. It just happens. And because so much of our modern life is about communications, connections, arrangements, logical thinking, analytical thinking, those things that Mercury rules, this is quite a significant uh, event that happens three times a year and it is something to take into account if you are a business owner or anything where you're planning projects and making arrangements. And so now talking about the eclipse. So this is a solar eclipse where the moon will be coming between the earth and the sun and it will have the most effect on those areas of the earth that I showed you before where the eclipse path will be. Nevertheless, it is still likely that we will have some eclipse effect here in New Zealand's Aotearoa and that can come in the form of sudden changes of direction that affect our karmic destiny or that feel kind of fated in some way. So take notice of sudden things that can come up even in the few months following the eclipse season. We have two eclipse seasons every year and we are just coming out this year, 2023, as a changeover year from Taurus and Scorpio eclipses. Anyone who is Taurus, especially also Scorpio, but really Taurus people have had such a lot of changes in the last year and a half or so. And that is going to be calming down a little bit in the coming year, you'll be pleased to know. We've still got and, and one more eclipse in Taurus and one more eclipse in Scorpio. But this year the eclipse points are moving into Aries and Libra and we're going to have quite a lot of focus with the relationship, the self and relationship dynamic that can go on. What is for me? What is for other people? How do I balance this out? Oh, more dynamic change. Such fun. I'm glad things are never boring, I hear you think to yourself. <laughs> Okay, so what to think about with this new moon in Aries and the Mercury retrograde coming up. Thinking back to the new ventures and bold new steps forward in new directions towards new horizons that you may have taken over the last little while. What do you need to revise and go back over and tweak, adjust so that things go along the path more smoothly in the future and in a direction that you want to go? And look at that humble song thrush standing up so tall and proudly there. Thinking about that confidence and boldness and uh, self-belief of Aries. Where do you need to stay in your power? What will help you stay in your power? And even if you've got nothing to help you, just still stand up tall knowing that you are a goddess and a god of this earth and you have a rightful place here. And you have a rightful place in new paths that your heart leads you to. And as you are flying about sorting things out during the Mercury retrograde or flying through taking your next steps on your new initiatives, what changes or unexpected ideas or turns around, turnarounds are coming in that might feel fated, especially around the eclipse time and after. There still could be new things coming in with the eclipse. What do you notice? There we go, everyone. That is my video about the new moon in Aries that's coming up on the 20th of April with the eclipse and followed by the Mercury retrograde. I hope that all goes well for you. I hope you receive blessings with the new moon and with the eclipse energy, which can be really exciting and that the Mercury retrograde goes smoothly and you sort some good stuff out. Hei konara, ka kite, blessings of the month, kia pai tō marama.